coral reefs here have adapted to the extreme thermal environment that they're facing every day, but they are different. So we do have many of the same species that you see throughout the Indo-Pacific as far as Australia and over to the western coast of the Americas. We only have about a subset of roughly 10% of those species occur here in the Gulf. The Arabian Gulf itself is quite shallow and as a result of this shallow depth and its relatively restricted exchange with the Indian Ocean through the very narrow Strait of Hormuz which is only 42 kilometers wide, we have an environment in which the water can heat up and cool down very rapidly. So in the summertime temperatures here will ramp up to around 36, 37 degrees Celsius, sea surface temperatures. And then as the seasons cool, they'll go down as cool as the low teens. Normally you see coral reefs in the tropics, low latitude tropics, they, they, they only fluctuate one or two degrees. Here we're seeing 20 degree temperature range every year from winter to summer. So we have extreme fluctuations in temperature. Normal oceanic salinity is around 37 parts per thousand, upwards of 40 in some places. Here we have salinity of 45 to even 50 parts per thousand. So the water in the Arabian Gulf is also quite salty. In addition to the natural stressors, obviously humans are having an impact on ecosystems along our coastlines as well. Coral reefs occupy about 1% of the Earth's surface, but they contain 25% of the marine species, for example. So they're quite imp important in terms of biodiversity. They filter pollution. Um, sediments like sands come, in large part, carbonate sands come from coral reefs. Um, they provide wave protection, and so there's a variety of different benefits there in addition to the products like fish that come off of coral reefs that can be support, important for supporting coastal populations. The research that we're doing in our lab has provided some really interesting insights into how organisms have responded to these extreme environmental conditions that we do have here in the southern Gulf. Clearly there's an adaptation story there. Um, but also some hints that it's coming from acclimation as well, that organisms do have physiological responses that they're able to take on. It appears that a lot of the response comes from adaptation, meaning that it would take generations, many, many generations, for organisms to adapt to climate change as it's currently occurring. But it does give some hope that organisms will be able to respond in other areas in the future.